everybody! Welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ayra, and today I'm going to be working on the Alchemist Lab. This is a collaboration between my channel and Darkest Raven Designs. I ended up meeting Chantel, who runs Darkest Raven Designs, through a competition that we both participated in on Jazz's channel. I was so excited to see another miniaturist being featured, and we ended up talking and we have a lot in common. She's like my crafty Australian soul sister. As you'll see, we have a very similar style, and at the end of this collab, our creations ended up looking like they could be in the same project slash time zone, timeline, and so it was really interesting to see these two projects come together. This is how the collab worked. We decided to give each other a household item that we had to use, and then a challenge word. Chantel gave me buttons and alchemy. So therefore, I'm going to be making an alchemist lab, and I'm going to try and use as many buttons as I can. Make sure to watch this entire video, because at the end, I'm going to be telling you the words that I gave to Darkest Raven Designs, and I will put a link in the description box below so you can go check out her channel. If you like my channel, I know for a fact you are going to love what she makes. So let's get started. The first thing I had to do was get my hands on some buttons. And I did leave some of the button noises in the video, a little ASMR for you guys. I'm not an ASMR fan or one who searches after that, but I thought the button noises were really cool, so I left them in the background. I'm very fortunate in the fact that one of my sisters is a huge button collector, and so when I told her I needed some buttons for a project, she said, come on over. She has several jars available, and she said I could go through any of them, except for one, which was a family heirloom. So I appreciated that so much because buttons can be expensive, and um, by her letting me kind of raid her collection, I had access to so many different kinds, and I was able to save a little bit of money. I let the buttons kind of lead some of my ideas. There were so many different types and sizes and shapes that as I pulled them out and looked through them, I used them to kind of form some of my ideas. I also at this point started looking up some images for alchemy and I got a lot of alchemist lab images and so with the combination of the buttons and the images I really started to form an idea of what I wanted in my project. I decided I wanted to do an alchemist lab. I also picked up a few other packages I thought might be helpful, but in the end I ended up using mostly buttons from my sister. So this is the last of the button noises. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. They won't be back. Now I'm going to begin with some foam board. I'm going to make foam board walls using hot glue, putting the foam board together. This is some sturdier foam board than I usually use. I'm not quite sure where I got it, but I do know that it is not dollar store foam board, so I do feel like this board held up a little bit better than my usual dollar store foam board. I used it to create the room, and then I also used it to create this stove, or this, I'm guessing an oven, um, but I saw it in several of the images when I was looking up alchemy. And I just made the entire thing out of foam board, cutting shapes until I was happy with the shape of it. And they look like they have a little brick oven that sits on top of like an arched door. So I just kind of went with what I saw in the pictures. I also made this bump out for the back wall and it has an arched opening which I saw in my main inspiration image and so I just kind of, that was the image I kept going back to and I kept pulling up and so even though I looked at a bunch of other images, that was the main image I decided to go off of. Now I am using some of my dollar store drywall spackle and this is going to go basically all over my project. I want this to have a very adobe fresco texture to it and I started filling in the gaps of the foam board and then I just I really loved the texture I was getting and so I ended up putting it everywhere all over the stove slash oven and then also all over the wall. Before I could glue these two pieces in, I knew I needed to focus on the floor. I found this material I had in my stash, and it's a very bumpy, 
pebbly type material and it actually matches with my example perfectly. So I went ahead and glued that in before I put any of the other pieces in. I used hot glue to glue in the wall that has the arched window in it and I went ahead and textured that opening before I glued it in so I didn't have to try to get texture into the opening. Once it was glued down to the foam board, I used some more of that drywall spackle to try and fill in the gaps and make it look as though it is one cohesive room. I did this on both sides of the walls and it did take a little bit to try and push the spackle into the gaps, but I do think the struggle was definitely worth it in the end. I did the same thing with the stove. I went ahead and tried to figure out where it would fit best and then I used the drywall speckle to attach it and make it look like it is just part of the wall. The black parts that you see there are places where I went ahead and painted before I glued it down because those spaces were easier to reach before it was glued in and I wanted to make sure you couldn't see any of the white foam board shining through. After everything was attached I just took some more drywall spackle and I just went all over the walls. This way the entire room has an even texture. For this chair I am using a pattern that was created by Heather Tracy. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the construction because I will link her video down below if you want to check out how, how she made the chair. She gave me permission to use this chair and to also change up the design just a little bit. For one, because I cut it out on a laser cutter and also because I wanted to create that hole you see in the back because I want to add a button to the back of the chair. Right now I'm just putting it all together with some zig two-way glue and I'm going to let it dry and put the entire chair together. Her chair was very detailed in the way that she made it. I simplified mine just a little bit, maybe because I had in my mind that this was a working chair, this wasn't a decorative piece in a home, this was a piece that was in a lap. I'm adding some of the smaller buttons to the sides. I actually end up adding nine buttons to this chair and a lot of them are on the, on the arms and legs of the chair and then I put one detail button in the backrest. The chair seat is actually made out of some faux leather that looks like it has a pattern printed on it and I think that worked out really well for the chair seat. Once it's all painted it looks like kind of an old wood chair and I was very glad to see that my measurements worked out and the button fit perfectly in the hole I created in the back of the chair. I put the button in the hole, glued it in, and then later on I painted over any of the glue that you could see. I'm adding another button to the top of the stove and I just think this will look really decorative like an inlay and it is pretty thick button but because I was inserting it into the stove I don't think you can tell and it just kind of looks like a medallion that's embellishing the stove. I cut out a hole, added some tacky glue and carefully placed the button into the hole and it did drop through and fall into the stove several times before I got it to stay. I also textured the little brick stove below and I think now we're ready to paint. I'm starting out with this mustardy yellow color which is a little bit bright but I do end up adding some lighter colors on top of it and this serves to tone it down just a little bit. I do this all over the walls, all over the wall jut out and then also over the stove except for the brick part. Here's where I'm adding like a light tan. I'm just dry brushing it and this is also going to help bring out the texture. So it's going to lighten the mustard color and then bring out the really earthy texture of the wall itself. Of course now that I've added some highlights to the walls I need to go in and age the walls a little bit too. This is a working lab where there's lots of smoke and fire and dirt and grime possibly building up so we have to make sure and get that in there. For the floor, I didn't want to add too much grunge, just a, you know, a basic floor that's been walked on and trampled on, and so I added a watered down black paint to the top of this textured paper. 
I made sure to get a little bit more black paint as you got closer to the stove area because that's where possibly some ash or smoke would have darkened the floor a little bit more. Once that was dry, I went ahead and painted the little brick oven and then aged it as well. I went in with a dark red and added some smoky, fiery, ashy black around the stove. Should I say stove or oven? I'm not quite sure. I should have looked up my alchemist terms a little bit better. I also decided I wanted to use one of my buttons as a burner. I'm again not quite sure if they had these, but I used the same technique as I did the previous button. I cut a hole and added it into the top of the stove. I'm just going to say stove. I had an idea to use buttons as lids for jars because if you turn some of them upside down, they do look like they have a little handle on top. So in order to make these jars, I am going to use some polymer clay. These are going to be a little bit weirdly colored because I'm using polymer clay that I don't normally use and then I'm going to paint them. To start out, I'm making some basic 3D shapes like I made a sphere and then I made a cylinder. I'm going to be connecting them together with my blending tool to create a jar shape. This makes them a little bit wonky and a little bit dented, but I think it adds to the handmade look of these jars. I also wanted to give a few of them handles, so I used my extruding tool to extrude some of the polymer clay. I'm just going to cut off two tiny lengths of clay and then again use my blending tool to blend them into the side of the jar. And there we have our first jar and I just pushed the button into the top so that it looks as though it's the lid. I did the same thing for each jar trying to vary the shape and this was really helpful to have my uh, inspiration images because I could get different jar shape ideas from those images. Then I baked them according to the package instructions and they were ready for painting. I like some of the shapes better than others, but my absolute favorite are these little spherical ones that were probably the easiest to make. While that was baking, I decided to also make um, this thing, which I think is maybe a distiller. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I, it doesn't look exactly like the one in my image, but I thought it would be a fun time to just play with the button shapes. And so it's kind of in the shape of whatever this contraption is. And um, I had a lot of fun putting it together. I used super glue to put four buttons together to make this tiny distiller. That's just what I'm, I'm going with. Y'all can let me know in the comments if that's not what it is. Now that the pots are out of the oven, I'm just going to paint them with some earth tone paints. I'm giving each one a base coat with some different colors and then I'm going to go back with a lighter color to give some highlights on the natural bumpiness of the jar and I think it just gives them a little bit more wear and tear and a little bit more realism. I'm also adding a little bit of paint to the button lids and this is going to help them look like they are part of the jar and not just a metallic addition that doesn't really make sense. I'm going to take a moment here and do a little mini commercial as opposed to putting a YouTube randomized commercial, I don't even know what it is, in the middle of my video. I want to plug a very specific Facebook group. This is very tough times for a lot of people including miniature artisans and small business owners that own dollhouse shops. This Facebook group called Marketing for Miniaturist Sell Your Minis has been created to try and boost the sales of those who are struggling. Therefore, if you feel right now that you are financially stable and possibly you are looking at some miniatures to purchase for a current project or an upcoming project, it would be great if you would go check out this Facebook group and see if there's anything that would interest you. I know this could be a really big help to those miniature artists and small business owners that are currently struggling. I do know several of the people who are selling there and they are great artists and will take care of you and make sure that your order is correct. However, I don't know everyone, so make sure you do your research. That being said, let's get back to the Alchemist Lab. I decided fairly early on that I wanted to make the Alchemist himself 
and um, this was kind of a dilemma because I didn't have a doll kit like I have had for the Adams Family. So I had to make everything from scratch. And I'm not super good at sculpting faces, I just kind of wing it. I watched other people do it and been in awe of um, their skill. And so I'm I'm trying to follow along. That's why I'm not um, <laughs> I'm not talking very much about what I'm doing. I will show it. I'm just not talking about it because there's so many other people that um, can explain what they're doing. I'm just trying to get a few shapes out of the clay uh, to come up with a, a decent face for my alchemist. You will see that I don't actually make him a mouth. The reason for this is because in a lot of the images, the alchemist shown had these long white beards. And so I really was planning on giving him a long white beard. And so therefore I didn't need to spend the time on giving him a mouth. To create the eyes, I did do the trick of just rolling up some white polymer clay and sticking it into the eye sockets and this is helpful because then I don't have to paint little tiny white eyes. So I kind of fast forward from this point on, I give him a few more wrinkles, I give him eyelids, and then I use some rubbing alcohol with a paintbrush to try and get out any fingerprints or dust that were left from me working in the clay. And this is how he is looking before he is baked. I also went ahead and made some hands off screen. I'm not the greatest at hands, I'm still learning. Um, I do have a live stream where I made thing. And so if you did wanna see how I typically make hands, you can go check out that live stream. Um, but I just made them off screen to help save time. I'm gonna be using the head, the hands that I made, pipe cleaners and aluminum foil and also the chair because that's where he's gonna be sitting um, and also some hot glue to put this entire alchemist together. I'm gonna to start with one of the pipe cleaners and I'm going to wrap it with the wire that I baked inside of the hand. And then I'm just using a little bit of hot glue to make sure that it stays connected. From making the Adamses, I have learned that, the well, I've learned the proper way to put a doll together. This is not, necessarily the proper way, but it worked for my purposes. I then bent the pipe cleaner that had the hands attached so that they, the arms were the correct length, and I'm just going to now glue the pipe cleaner to the stick that was baked inside of the head. And I will admit, he's looking pretty creepy, I know that, but just wait, it'll get better, I promise. Right now, the purpose of the pipe cleaner is going to be to act as a place to wrap foil around to create the body shape. So basically, the pipe cleaner is acting as the bones, and I'm bending them into the correct proportions, although he's going to look a little bit funny until I start to fill him out with the aluminum foil. To do this, I just pulled off strips of aluminum foil and started wrapping it around the pipe cleaner. And now you can see he's starting to get a little bit more of a human shape. Once I have his body kind of shaped out, I'm gonna put him in the chair and start bending him into what I think is going to be a pose that makes sense for him working at a stove. And then I covered him in hot glue to keep him in place. This is going to be a very fast overview of the clothing because I've done several clothing tutorials, but this one ended up being the easiest clothing tutorial. I made some very loose pants and stuffed the pant legs into some pre-made miniature boots. And then I used a blue fabric, put it over him kind of like a scarf, really loose. And then I did the same thing with a little bit larger piece of brown fabric. And I glued everything with hot glue, which maybe wasn't the best idea because I got glue on his pants. But honestly, this is one of my favorite outfits I've ever made and it was the easiest because I was just draping fabric. From there, I put a little beard on, and um, if you do wanna see more details on how to make wigging, you can go look at any of my Adams Family videos. To make his hat, I found this button, and this button probably inspired the entire alchemist, it's this little blue button, and I added a little bit of a fuzzy fabric on it around the edge, kind of bent in the two sides so it fit on his head, and glued it in place. And as soon as I saw this button, I knew this was going to be a hat. <laughs> 
I also added a smaller button to his cloak to look as though he has buttoned his entire outfit together at that point. So here is how he is looking. Um, he's looking a little wizardy because of his eyes. So I had to go in and add some irises and pupils so he looked not as magical and mystical, I guess. He's just the normal guy trying to make some gold. Now I'm moving back to the room box itself. I want to add in some shelving. I see a lot of these skinny shelves in my inspiration images and so I wanted to make sure and add those in. I'm going to probably put in three and this is just a, I think it's maybe a half inch wide strip of wood. I'm going to use my easy cutter to cut off the wood and just make three of those that are the exact same length. In order to make supports for the shelves, I just cut at a 45 degree angle on that same piece of wood so that I had a little support. And I'm going to make three of those for each shelf. Once that's glued on, this is how they look. I'm not gluing them in yet though because I'm going to paint them. Before I paint, I want to make a small table as well. I'm starting with some balsa wood and the reason I'm using balsa wood for this I'm not a huge balsa wood fan, but you can get a lot of really cool texture in balsa wood because it is so incredibly soft. At this point, I'm taking my X-Acto knife and I'm carving down the edges just to make it look a little bit more worn, and I'm using a metal ruler to indent in the edges. That is how soft this wood is. You can dent it really, really easily. I turn the top upside down and now I'm going to make a frame with four pieces on the bottom. This is going to help me glue my table legs in place. Once the frame is complete and glued onto the bottom of the table top, I'm going to take my, um, I think it's 3 8 by 3 8 inch dowel and I'm going to cut four equal legs. Now that the frame is done, I can glue these up into the corner of each frame and that's going to help my table leg stay on. If you glue it just straight to the underside of the tabletop, it's more likely that your legs will not be as secure. This is a pretty easy way to make a very quick table. I did want to add a little bit more of a support to the legs and so I took a different piece and I cut it at a diagonal just so it looks like maybe this table's been used for years and they've just been supporting it as they've gone through the years. So I made a diagonal at each table leg and honestly it's turned into a pretty sturdy little table. I'm also going to use my X-Acto knife on these legs and age them up a little bit along with the shelves. Now I'm going to paint everything with a dark brown and then of course age it with a little bit of watered down black. You want to be careful when you're using washes with balsa wood because it does soak it up like a sponge and it can, if it's not glued down really well, it can warp. Now that they're all painted, I just want to put them in and get, get an eye for what I like, how I like the shelving spaced out, and where I want the table to be. I do like how they turned out and I think the dark brown is a great contrast with the really bright wall. In order to glue the shelves in, I decided to set some heavy objects on the foam board itself. This keeps the foam board straight while the glue is drying and this just helps to keep anything from warping further. The whole thing has stayed pretty straight and not warped. This is just another way to ensure as I'm gluing something new to the project that it continues to stay straight. Now I'm pulling out buttons from the collection that I went through earlier that I think will be really cool pieces to go up on the shelf. I'm not quite sure what to call them. Are they supposed to be like plates or medallions? Maybe the alchemist is an artist and he likes to make these medallions to go into other people's stoves. I'm not quite sure, but at this point I was just playing around with some ideas. I also wanted to add a little stack of buttons that look like maybe some lids that he left up on the shelf. I went through my alchemist images and pulled out several things that I liked and I wanted to make some scrolls and some wall hangings. 
I printed them out at 600 dpi and this means that it's just a really high quality print and then I took some brown watercolor and went over the images so that when I cut them out they both the front and the back look as though they're aged and old paper. The first image that I put in there was the alchemical table of symbols which I thought was really appropriate. Another one that looks like a sketch of an alchemist working and then this one over to the side was an ancient scroll and so I just put it on a toothpick and then glued it to the wall as though it was being displayed. I also rolled up several of the other images I printed out and those became scrolls that will eventually go on the table. I found this button in my search that looked like the top of a basket. It has a very woven texture even though the button is plastic. So I also found this basket in my collection and I thought the two would work really well together to look as though they were a basket with a lid. And so I cut the top part off of the basket, I made sure it wouldn't unravel, and then I painted them the same color. And as I paint it you can see more of the woven texture. I painted them a dark brown and you won't see the inside so I don't really paint that. But then I also shove some brown fabric in there because I do want to have some buttons peeking out from this basket. And I don't want to waste a bunch of buttons in there so I figured I could stuff it with the fabric and then just put a few on top that look like they're peeking out. This will give the illusion that this basket is full of metals or precious jewels or things possibly the alchemist has been working with. I also found this floral thing that I made a while ago, I guess it's called a bouquet. And I decided to add some very small buttons to the centers of the flowers. And then I also found this book that I made a long time ago that had kind of been damaged. And so I'm taking off the pieces that were damaged and replacing those with buttons. So it looks kind of like this book has button clasps. So now it's time to put it all together. Here is the finished broom box. I've made almost everything in here except for the buttons. Um, I have a box that has all the items I made in this video and then I have another box of accessories that I will be putting in that were items that I have found in my collection that I think will really suit this project. I started by putting in all the items I had made except for the alchemist. I also found this button I thought would be a great plate and then I added plates on top of it. Added in the scrolls and then the things that go on top of the stove. And here where I put the rug in is where I start to use items that I pulled from my collection. I really like this rug because the blue matched the alchemist's outfit. I put some logs underneath the stove area. I don't know what this is, I think it's some kind of grinder so I figured he could use that. Put in some more jugs, some glass items up on the shelves including like a little weighing thing, a, a scale, there we go. I put a little mug next to the stove while he works. And finally, we can insert the alchemist himself and his chair that was made with Heather Tracy's design. I now wish that I had put the button in the opposite way because you can't see it when he's sitting in the chair, um, but you know, hindsight's 2020. I wanted to make sure it looked as though he was checking on something at the stove, and I think the addition of his little character really brings some life to this scene. I was really pleasantly surprised with how well the item's buttons and the challenge word alchemy ended up working together. I don't feel like this scene is overwhelmed by buttons, but I do feel like they kind of complemented the idea of an alchemist lab. Now once I went through and I counted up all the buttons because I knew someone would be wondering how many buttons were in there, there were 40 eight buttons and I thought to myself surely I can fit in two more buttons to make it an even 50. So I decided to add two very small buttons to the alchemist boots because honestly he only had two buttons on his outfit and an outfit is the best place to put buttons. So I added two more to the alchemist outfit so that we now have an even 50 buttons in this scene. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a blast putting this project together. When I first heard the word buttons, I was thinking, what am I going to do with this? But I really, really like the result. 
please make sure to check out Darkest Raven Designs. Again, her channel is going to be linked down below. You guys will love her. Thank you, Chantel, for doing this collab with me. I think this is a really great time to do it because it feels like you guys get two videos to watch unless you're already subscribed to her and then it's the same amount of videos. But if you are not familiar with her, you get two videos to watch that are kind of in the same threshold of ideas. Oh, and I forgot I was going to tell you my challenge to her. My household item, and mind you, I gave this to her before everything happened, was paper towels. And I did tell her she could switch if she needed to based on paper product availability, but she said she was okay. And the challenge word was medieval. We came up with these ideas without even consulting each other, so it's kind of funny that alchemy, medieval, end up having similar aesthetics. But anyway, you'll love her project. Go check it out. Also make sure to check out that Facebook group, and if you're financially able, it would be great if you could help out some of those struggling artists and business owners. I hope you all have an amazing week, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!